everyone and welcome back to the Austin Physic YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about scoliosis. So scoliosis is defined as changes in the curvature of the spine. So most commonly either an S shape or a C shape and what it's normally defined or categorised as is either structural or functional. This is really important when providing exercises and advice for our clients as osteopaths. The reason why, if we're thinking of a structural scoliosis, it's where it's typically fixed in a position and it can be due to either some kind of surgery to the spine that's fixed it into that S-shaped position, it can be due to significant injury or trauma or, or fracture or damage to the actual integrity of the spine or the pelvis that leads to this abnormal positioning of the spine functional more commonly is when we've had patterns or repetitive positions that have put a or developed a scoliotic curve so i.e if we're finding day to day we're constantly leaning forward and dropping this side or maybe twisting through the pelvis we get a change in the overall spinal curvature the reason why this is really important is first of all when someone comes in we need to know what type of scoliosis they have but also is it static or is it progressive if someone has had a trauma or they've developed a scoliosis that is progressively getting worse this is a real 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 red flag for us and the reason why is if you're constantly twisting or rotating and it continues to increase this can impact someone's breathing it can impact obviously their heart and any kind of symptoms of, of cardiac issues it can also impact how someone develops and how they're feeling in terms of pain and ten tenderness in the body. So first of all, what we would do if someone comes in is we need to send them for an x-ray, see what's going on, measure the cob angle, so the angle of the curve, and also make sure this is being tested and analyzed long term. If someone is coming in with a straightforward functional scoliosis, i.e. we feel like we can adapt and bring it back to an optimal position, this is the type of scoliosis we are gonna be looking at today. So the top or the best stretches we are going to show you for a scoliosis is all about rebalancing through the body. So we would always recommend going and seeing a musculoskeletal expert first, analysing which bits are tight or restricted with you so that you can optimise the stretching. But the whole idea that we're going to have a look at today is all about stretching through the chest, stretching all the way down through the back and into that lower body so that we're able to balance both sides of the spine and improve movement. We are also going to be looking at the best strengthening exercises for scoliosis and the reason why is we typically have a side that is incredibly, incredibly tight holding the body into a position and then coupled with that we have a side that is incredibly or possibly quite weak and therefore having to compensate and maintain that position so this is all stuff that we're going to look at today so first of all we want to start off with a cat cow movement and all the exercises that we're going to show today for scoliosis is all about adding optimal balance through the spine and releasing the surrounding muscles so what we typically find with scoliosis is a lot of people have a hyperkyphosis which means they're kind of flexing and bending forward so you want to regain movement through the thoracic spine first so leaning up and dropping down in cat cow and then moving side to side because again it's really common if you've got a rotation through the spine or in the curvature of the spine that you get restriction into the ribs and the surrounding muscles then we then want to open up into the side of the ribs and then releasing down thinking of the diaphragm attachments and how the muscles blend from the upper back to the lower back we then want to stretch into a child's pose position so we're decompressing and releasing that lower spine but again we're also trying to regain that mobility to add in extra stretch and rotation, we want to then thread the needle so we're twisting with rotation in that child's pose position, aiming to hold each of these moves between 15 to 30 seconds. So it's a really lovely way to open up through the body. So it's really, really nice. And again, you're looking at movement through the spine, through the ribs, but also releasing the surrounding muscles. We then want to add in strength as well. So although this glute bridge is getting you to extend and open up through the lower back, we're also squeezing the glutes as we're lifting. 
if the core and the glutes are strong you're more likely to be balanced through your pelvis but you're more likely to have a stronger core so that you can hold yourself upright and again less likely to rotate or twist into that functional scoliosis same here moving on to the toe taps again only doing the toe taps if you're happy and comfortable with glute bridges but what you're trying to do is tap the foot down towards the floor without lifting up through the back so you need to make sure your back is completely flat the whole time aim between 10 to 15 reps on each side next we want to move on to is knee sway side to side so again integrating that movement so this whole routine has been designed to move and strengthen and balance through the body so very gently swaying side to side with the knee sways so aiming between 10 to 15 reps either way or doing it for 30 seconds whatever feels more comfortable and then again increasing that decompression I see it all the time in clinic if we're twisted through the upper back typically we're twisted through the pelvis we're slightly weak through the core so it's all about adding in that lovely balance and that lovely release into the body so you want to hold this here for about 30 seconds and then once you've done the knee sways you want to gently release through the knee sways and we're then going to move on to stabilization through the upper body so again a lot of the time with a scoliosis we see people with a slightly bigger thoracic curve so they're leaning forward but they've also lost control of shoulder movement and retraction and fixing so with the first move we're doing it on all fours pinching the the shoulders together by keeping the arm straight or we can do it in a seated position where you're bringing the arm back straight without bending or trying to reduce the bend at the elbow so again you should feel like it's your shoulder blade that's moving so either do the one before where you're on all fours if you can hold your core tight or moving through that shoulder blade so again lovely slow and controlled through the shoulders balancing through the body we then want to pop hands into our side and we want to retract a little bit more because again if we've improved spinal movement and we can then strengthen through the rhomboid muscles we're more likely to hold balance through the shoulder blades we're holding it there less likely to twist forward on one side but also it becomes a lot more more obvious when you do both sides and then one side on each the where the imbalance is because you know we said about areas of restriction and areas of tightness we then want to typically stretch into the pectoral muscles, so arm up against the wall or the side, and then twisting away and stretching and holding for 30 seconds on each side. So again, we want to move, we want to strengthen, and we want to stretch. We're then going to move on to, finally, just a little bit of foam rolling through the body. So this is all about releasing those deeper postural muscles. Only do this if you feel comfortable with the other exercises, and you want to aim for about 30 seconds to release that tightness through the body.